All right, y'all, welcome back. What we're gonna tie today, uh, this is one of the dry fly staple flies to keep in your box. This is the Adams dry fly. Uh, very productive uh, topwater fly. Anybody who uh, does any kind of dry fly fishing probably has these. You can tie them in a uh, very wide range. I usually tie these between a 12 down to an 18. Uh, what we got in the box today, this is a Daiichi 1180 in uh, standard dry fly. Uh, the thread that we're going to use today, this is Vivas in 18-0. Um, I tend to tie all my dry flies with the smallest possible uh, tying thread. Uh, less weight, more float time, stuff like that. Uh, tends to make a difference. The hackles that we're going to use today for our tailing materials and our winging materials, uh, this is, as you can see, I've used up uh, quite a bit of these patches. Uh, these are normally down closer to the top of the neck or where your good dry fly stuff comes from. But don't throw these out, you can still use these. We're gonna use these for the telling materials and the winging materials. That's a grizzly and a, a bard in brown. And then for our hackle, I have some Waddington uh, dry fly rooster hackles. I have one in grizzly and one in brown. Uh, these are already gauged out to uh, size 12. If you don't have a sunrise gauge, a uh, good rule of thumb is just come a little bit past the bottom um, of your hook point there, and that'll help you out. So let's get started. We're gonna start our thread in the front. We're gonna come back roughly uh, one third of the hook, and we're gonna come back on itself. This is gonna give us a place to tie in our wing tips. Now for our wing tips, uh, came in and I selected some that are similar like this and I've trimmed them down like that okay so this is typically how I would tie these in you're gonna put them shiny side to shiny side and you'll tie them in together that way they splay apart but since this is beginner uh, what we're gonna do is tie them in individually until you get comfortable with that so it's still gonna be shiny side to shiny side that way the concave goes out the length of this is gonna be roughly the shank of the hook. We're gonna come in and catch that in on the side. And then we're gonna position it. Gonna pull it up, set it. Set it where you need it. This ain't your uh, final set, so don't worry about it. Come in and clean that out. Oh, hit your bobbin, it makes for a fun time. We're gonna come in, and now we're gonna match these up. Pull them down toward each other. Set that, that's a little short, so I'm gonna pull it back out. Then we're gonna pull them and figure eight. and pull everything back, build a little thread down there in the front so they stand up. Come in and clean these out. It's easier to do it now than later. Now these wing tips are typically gonna be a little bit longer than your hackles. Uh, you can tie this fly without even putting these in. Uh, most of the time for my production flies, I do that uh, just because it, it really is more of an aesthetic than it is uh, gonna do anything else for your fly. Now for the telling materials, we're gonna take one of those leftover grizzly and browns. As you can see, this has been pulled out. What you wanna do is marry these up and then you're just gonna rip off a piece of those together. This is where you're gonna get your telling material. So you wanna put them straight together like so, grab a little pinch and just pull it off. Now, before you let them all the way go, you wanna to try to line the tips up just a little bit. Tail is gonna be roughly uh, the overall length of the hook. You wanna come in, cut those curlies off. You know, pinch and loop, pinch and loop. Take a look at it. Then you're gonna wrap back to the gouge, which is right there. One more wrap will do it. Now I'm gonna come up under and that's gonna let those splay out and set across the top. 
Now for the body of this, we're gonna use Adam's uh, gray dubbing. This is Wapsi Superfly uh, Extra Fine in waterproof. Now you wanna build up a nice body. It's gonna go from thin to thicker toward the front. You don't wanna get too carried away with it because it's still gonna trap and hold a lot of water. We're gonna add our dubbing on, quick little noodle. Now remember, it's always easier to add dubbing uh, it's a lot easier to add it than it is to remove it. So we'll stop right there. We'll add another little pinch because it's going to come up short. Nice tight touching wraps. Nothing says you can't go back over it to get that bulk. We're gonna stop just a little bit shy. It's about a hook eye back. This is where we're gonna come in with our dry fly hackles to collar it. Um, doesn't matter which one you tie in first. You're gonna fan those uh, hackles out like that. You're gonna come in, trim it into an anchor point like that. Now, if you're wrapping away from yourself, you wanna grab these hackles up in the front and pull those off. That's gonna let that hackle start the wrap and continue through uh, without fouling. If you start wrapping your hackle and it folds forward, you're doing it wrong. So you want to catch that in. Same thing with the Grizzly. When you come in, you're going to create that, that nice uh, triangle or ankle, anchor point. You don't want to cut that down to the stem. You want a little place for those barbs to dig in. That way you don't pull the feather out when you start wrapping. If you do that, then it's a back up and do over. We'll come right across the top of that brown. Keep everything out of the way. Take a wrap to the front. Now the one that you go in that goes in last, that's going to be your first wrap. So you're going to take one solid turn, cross under the bottom. Cross under the bottom, pull your wings back, get right in front of those. All the way up to the front. I catch across the bottom, front, bottom. Now before you cut that loose, you're gonna wanna come in with a half inch tool and set that real quick. That's gonna pin all your extras back. Then you're gonna break your thread off, just like so. When you use this lightweight stuff, it's gonna happen a lot. So what you wanna do is come back here to where you got your original tie-in point for the brown because that front part's already secure, so we don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna come in, clip that. You're gonna wiggle your thread through those wraps so you don't catch them. Pull your wings back one more time. Catch right in the front. And now you're back to the front. And you didn't do a whole lot of damage to the fly. So now you're gonna come in with your brown. And just like when you break your thread off, you're gonna to wanna to weave in and out of those hackles to keep from trapping. You don't wanna trap them and keep them squashed down. So that's where we're at with that. Then you get to the front, same as with the Grizzly. You're gonna trap it under the bottom. We're gonna come in with our half hitch tool one more time. Push everything to the back. This is also gonna um, help you keep that hook eye clear, make it a lot easier to tie in uh, on the water. Now you can add your head cement and stuff like that uh, if you want to. I tend to leave head cement off. I do enough half hitches uh, to keep it from uh, falling apart. These things are going to be limited as far as how many fish you take on them anyway. And I'm trying to go for the lightest possible. Uh, fly Hopefully you guys enjoy that um, Put that in your box if you don't have it Which if you're a fly fisherman and you fish dries You have this in your box anyway uh, Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe Go check us out over on Instagram and Facebook And until next time